Two new medical initiatives are moving forward in South Korea. This month, the health ministry announced efforts to standardize Korean traditional medicine, and the National Assembly also passed the Well Dying Bill that, starting in 2018, will allow patients with no hope of recovery to end their lives by refusing life-sustaining treatment. I spoke with two medical professionals to shed light on these two changes and how they might affect South Korea. I am Rob Jonquiera. I am a retired family doctor, and at this moment I am acting as World Federation Communications Director. The World Federation is a federation of 59 Right to Die societies uh, around the world in about 29 countries. And we are functioning as an umbrella to facilitate cooperation wherever it is possible. Many countries in the world start by having what they call mainly, and in the Netherlands it is called, the patient rights uh, law, in which the patients are allowed to say, this is a treatment I want, or this is a treatment I do not want. And if, uh, if in the end uh, the treatment is futile, this new law you have, uh, will have in South Korea will have possibility for the patient to refuse treatment, uh, which is in that way uh, because he doesn't want to, to get on living in a suffering situation. Of course, it, I, I cannot promise uh, it, will, it, uh, it will turn into a law which goes further than just give the patient the right to decide I don't want to be treated anymore or the family. But I have seen the movements around the world, and I can speak, of course, mainly of the experiences in the Netherlands, where we have a kind of law like you will have now already uh, long before we had the euthanasia law. Um, so it is, it is important, at least, to give the patient the right and the possibility to refuse a treatment that a patient considers to be futile because he's going to die anyway and even the treatment maybe will not be helping him to live in a good quality. But it might well be that patients in the future, once they have this possibility, uh, also will go one step further and say we not only refuse treatment which is futile, but we also want to go one step further and say, well, we want to terminate the suffering. And the only way to do that is by terminating my life or terminating this suffering life. South Korea will soon join countries around the world where patients have the legal right to refuse life-sustaining treatment. But what are the different options that may one day also arrive here in South Korea? And how is the rest of the world progressing in this area? If we talk about euthanasia, uh, it is mainly meant that the doctor is actively injecting the euthanasia medication into the patient, so is directly actively involved in the dying. Uh, it is via an intravenous drip or via injection. You're talking about assisted suicide when the doctor is prescribing the medication and the patient is taking the medication him or herself. Most assisted suicide implies that the patient takes and is able to take the medication orally. We see more and more states in the United States, we see more and more countries where these kind of legalization is going forward, uh, are being debated in, par in Parliament, we see UK, France, Germany, the Scandinavian countries. Um, even Italy and Spain and, and Australia and New Zealand are actively at this moment. So progression in, in more countries with a law for legalized assisted dying, as we generally call it. The other movement is certainly in countries who have uh, assisted dying uh, possible at this moment. There we see that uh, people who want to end their lives, there are more and more uh, people who say, I am not very ill, but I'm just so old, my life is over, I want to do it, and I want to be assisted, not by a doctor, because it is not a, uh, a medical issue, actually. Uh, that is a very difficult uh, discussion. I do not consider this to be a slippery slope from the euthanasia. It is a new, uh, new input uh, where patients actually say, we see it as an autonomic right we have to ask, our life is our life, and do it themselves.
I also spoke with a Korean traditional medicine specialist to discuss making herbal medicine into tablets and syrup, as well as other government efforts to standardize the industry and how the field will continue to adapt in the future. My name is Dr. Raymond Royer, and I'm originally from Austria. Uh, I'm here in Korea now for about 27 years, uh, studied the traditional Korean medicine, and uh, I'm still the only Westerner who uh, is able to practice Korean tra traditional medicine in Korea. And currently I'm working for Chasing Hospital of Korean Medicine, which is specialized on spinal disc problems, joint problems, those kind of issues. And our hospital is a very new concept. Uh, it's integrative, so that means we try to combine Western medicine and traditional medicine. When we look on the history, and especially when we look on the, on the present situation, uh, I have to say uh, I see a lot of changes going on. Yeah? Uh, in, in, in early times at the beginning when I came to Korea, each doctor had different kinds of methods, acupuncture, herbal medicine, prescriptions, and so on. Nowadays, especially, for instance, our hospital is one of the leading kind of uh, uh, hospitals to try to kind of standardize the treatments. So I think um, this is the way it should be and should be in the future. And also the government is seeing that that's probably the future for the, even traditional medicine. So the, I think the efforts from the government to try to standardize uh, and objectivize the, the treatment, I think it's, it's the right direction of all. And finally, Dr. Royer says Western technology is important for the future of Korea's traditional medicine. Honestly, the Western, the, the scientific medicine offers more possibilities to objectively uh, do the diagnosis. So I think we, we just need to utilize that kind of uh, equipment, which is, uh, has already started. And uh, uh, I think in the future, uh, it would be even increased. So by this, uh, for the patient and for the doctors themselves, we, we know what's going on exactly, and accordingly we can treat the patient uh, best as possible. Um, so I think uh, it's a trend which has started already, and uh, it should continue and will continue. For KoreaFM.net, I'm Chance Dorland.